Jealousy is the fear of being displaced. Secondly, jealousy is feeling threatened by another. Feeling threatened by another. It may be another person. Uh, it may be another thing. Third definition, jealousy is always triggered by a third party. Now the third party can be a person. The third party can be a situation. The third party can be an entity. The third party can be a church. Okay, now allow me to give you a definition of envy. Envy is feeling ill will. Feeling what? Feeling ill will toward those who possess the thing that we want. Sometimes the status we want, it's this person's status. Sometimes it's the success. Sometimes it's achievements, influence, appearance. Whenever you have jealous and envy, you're gonna have selfishness. You're gonna have prideful ambition. You're gonna have impatience, impatience. You fine with your car. You fine with your house. It's a gift from God. You look out the window, your neighbor got another new car. I mean, did, did, didn't he? Didn't they get a car lap? One that? How many years ago would they got that car? Now all of a sudden, your car is not good enough now. Impatience, false view of God, jealous and envious people have a false view of God and they have a false view of themselves. Jealous and envious people are motivated by fear. The rest of the way, I'm going to give you some tips. This is how you keep jealousy out of you. This is how we keep it out of our church. This is how we, we drive out envy, drive out jealousy. You can drive it out of your families. You can drive it out of your workplace. You can drive it out of your church. You can drive it out of your community. Number one, the key is revelation. Say revelation. What? Number one, that God is no respect of persons. Get that revelation. God is no respect of persons. He has no favors. Acts 10, 34, 35. He has no favors. Number two, you have to have a revelation that there's plenty. Genesis 17, 1. He they'll shout out a God that's more than enough. Number three, you need a revelation that there's a place for you. There's a place for you. 1 Corinthians 12, 18 says, God has set the members, every one of them, in the body as it pleased him. You in there. Come on, say, I'm in there. Amen. Fourth revelation that you need is that God loves diversity. He likes different kinds of stuff. And, and see, now when I look at ministers, I don't feel no jealous. I like, wow, that boy, that boy's bad right there. I mean, did you see how he took that text? I'm like, Ooh. <laughs> why? Because, you know, as you mature, you see his diversity. See, he's graced different people to do different things. That's why they're different races, because God liked diversity, like black. He want everybody to be black, so he made some white folk. He didn't want everybody to be white folk, so he made some Hispanic folk. Then he made some red folk and some yellow folk, some brown folk, because God loves what? And that's why you see different anointings on singles, different anointings on preachers, different people do it just different, because God loves diversity, and that's biblical. That's Romans chapter 12, verse 6. Number five, you need a revelation of God's attitude is to be inclusive. Number six, a revelation that your uniqueness is a gift to humanity. God made you with different fingerprints, different DNA. Nobody does it like you. And your uniqueness is your gift to humanity. Here's the final revelation you need. You need to choose to be inspired rather than intimidated. 
So you normally when you're gonna see something going on, if it's something you want or something you need or something you like to have, you got a choice now. You can choose to be intimidated. You can choose to be what? Inspired. Inspired.